What's up guys, Chris here, back in No Man's Sky Beyond, and today we're going to dive right in with all of the spaceship weapon upgrades. This includes the Photon Cannon, the Face Beam, the Positron Ejector, the Infra Knife, Cyclotron Ballista, and finally the Rocket Launcher. Going over the actual weapons first, there's a few general guidelines over here for those who are looking to make some upgrades. First, you unlock most of these weapons and their respective tech upgrades at the Space Anomaly Researchers. These cost about 150 nanites for the main weapon modules with 50 for their respective upgrades. The upgrades generally provide good buffs such as cooldown or heat reduction, increased ammo size and so on. So you will generally want to get these two if you want to maximize those bonuses. The second type of upgrades you'll be looking into are the upgrade modules that you can get for roughly 350 to 500 nanites at the space station ship specialists for the maximum rank. As far as the setup goes, as you can see I have completely filled up my ship with all of the upgrades and the way I set them up is that I made sure that the main tech is surrounded by the maximum rank modules with the C class or B class tech upgrades being left at the edges to maximize that bonus. Realistically speaking though you will never have all of these weapons installed because it's simply a waste of space and at most you will need no more than two of these weapon types. Anyway I'm going to start things off with the alternate weapons first and only later I cover the photon cannon and the face beam because I bet most people here already know enough about those two. Now the positron ejector is the first one I'll cover mainly because it just blew my mind how powerful this thing is and how much fun it can be especially once fully upgraded. It behaves similar to a shotgun, of course assuming that shotgun was given a heavy dose of weapon grade steroids. In its most basic form it shoots a wide cone of energy but it suffers from poor range and a low rate of fire. Once you do start adding the upgrades though, especially the fragment supercharger that increases the range and then the modules for the insane fire rate, almost all drawbacks are gone and all that is left is a weapon that brings destruction in a wide area in front of your ship. In this case I've seen it dealing over 8000 damage in its optimal range and that was per bullet by the way so you can obliterate literally anything in close to medium proximity and I've had situations when I took down an entire fleet of enemy ships thanks to how wide the cone of damage can actually be. Now in terms of playstyle you will have to play rather close to the enemies compared to other weapons meaning that you will expose yourself at times to danger and damage for a little bit too long so this is a weapon that fully shines if your defenses are on par with your offenses. In this case damage fall off is quite big meaning that unless enemies are in that close proximity you're going to just tickle them so you're not going to be doing any damage but since they almost always tend to charge you head on or are close to you regardless that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Again this weapon will not disappoint no matter what. The next weapon is of course the Infra Knife and I would qualify this as the exact opposite of the Positron Ejector in terms of how it functions. As in it has a huge rate of fire, incredible range but it also comes at the cost of having a much lower per bullet damage. It also tends to overheat quite quickly leaving you with a pretty long cooldown time probably the longest out there in the game so uh, yeah you can have to be careful with that but that can be dealt with to a certain extent thanks to its upgrades. First its non-linear optics upgrade gives you an additional 3 total cannon count meaning that you will shoot more bullets meanwhile the modules further increase heat dispersion as well as damage and rate of fire. So a fully upgraded infra knife will deal about 250 damage per bullet but because you are sending so many of them per second it more than makes up for that really amazing DPS. And the ideal situation over here is to shoot this in bursts to avoid overheating and also while the enemies run in a straight trajectory either towards or away from you. Otherwise because it's a long range weapon it means that you can shoot pretty much anything even miles away way before the other ships have a chance to reach with theirs. Making this an ideal situation where you might not want to damage yourself too much so you can stay a little bit further in the back. The third weapon upgrade is called the Cyclotron Ballista and in terms of damage per bullet and the fire rate 
this would be situated somewhere between the infra knife and the positron ejector. It shoots rather large balls of energy that travel in a straight line and do not stop unless they hit something. Its bonus tech upgrade helps you out with heat dispersion giving you an 11% bonus to that, while the modules mostly add to that as well as to fire rate, roughly 35% and 14% for each respectively, with damage only being around 1 or 2%, so most of its damage already comes in its basic form, making it a pretty good choice even without any upgrades. I've seen bullets dealing anywhere between 1.2 and 2.5k damage, so again, it's good without, uh, without upgrades as well. Now because the bullets and the rate of fire make this weapon the slowest of the bunch, I can also see why some of the users might not like this as much as the other options. Also its bullets don't have the slightest enemy tracking that other weapons have, meaning that this might require a bit more skill compared to other weapons in the game, but overall this is still going to be a very good overall weapon to use. Its rate of fire is perfectly balanced with the overall damage, and from my testing I would actually place this higher than the infra knife just because the time to kill is in fact much lower even compared to the infra knife which is normally much faster now the fourth and the next weapon is a little bit more strange to say the least this is the rocket launcher it's the only weapon in the game that only comes with one single unlockable tech upgrade the large rocket tube that gives a 20 percent heat recovery bonus and that is it there's no upgrade modules to speak of nothing else on top of this now because of the way this works i I wouldn't even use it normally as anything more than a secondary one-time attack, if that at most. This is in no way, shape or form fit to being a primary weapon or a primary damage dealer. And that is because its rockets don't actually track enemies, making it very hard at times to hit the target, especially if they're trying to flank you or if they're moving all over the place. To top it off, the cooldown is also very long, some of the longest in fact I've seen for all of the upgrades, and even the damage isn't really that great or at least not the DPS. That is why I said that this is best used as a secondary attack. Let's say after your primary weapon overheated or the enemy is low on HP and it's running away, you can probably quickly switch to this and use it as a finishing attack. But otherwise, this is something that I think should get a complete revamp by Hello Games and have enemy tracking included as well. In its current state, as a matter of fact, I never use it and I always scrap it past the first few hours of the game because there's simply way too many bad other options in the game that don't have to occupy unnecessary space. Now the final two weapons I'm going to talk about are the photon cannon and the mining beam and this is something I'll cover quickly because most of you already know how these work. Now the photon cannon can be upgraded with the non-linear optics for a better heat dispersion and the upgrade modules for a bit more heat damage as well as fire rate. Once fully upgraded it's actually a good all-around weapon, it has a decent rate of fire, it has good damage meaning that you can perfectly use this both in the beginning of the game as well as in the end game against entire fleets of enemies without that many problems. But it can still fall off a bit short compared to the previous more powerful upgrades and yeah, just take that as you will but its main advantage is the fact that it can be installed rather early on in the game, it doesn't require unlocking, at the very least not the base tech and it's also oftentimes pre-installed in most ships. Now as far as the mining beam goes, as the the name implies this is mostly suited for mining, so not that much combat, but I will admit that this is actually also pretty decent at combat as well. A fully upgraded mining beam with the delimiter upgrade and the three modules has quite a lot of bonuses, especially to heat dispersion as well as damage. This means that the beam is actually a decent combat choice even early on in the game if you have these upgrades, and in fact this can deal a surprisingly high 2000 damage about every second as you fire it, so it's definitely very useful. It also has enemy tracking baked into it, it's probably the best enemy tracking in the game, so it's really easy to clip the enemies with the beams themselves. Even more so if you only tap and not shoot the button, the heat meter will never increase, making it amazing both at mining as well as damage. Anyway, to sum it all up, I would place the Positron Injector first, way ahead of any of the other weapons in the game. It's simply a beast that brings destruction all over the place. Everything else is a matter of choice from here on, so all of these other weapons are going to be really close to one another, and this includes the Cyclotron Ballista, which I would place on the second spot, followed closely by the Photon Cannon, 
and finally the infra knife. We also have the mining beam but this is overall useful for something else not just combat so it's kinda a little bit outside of the ranking and the rocket launcher isn't even on the list in its current form at least not as a primary slash damage dealer so take it as you will but this is my final verdict and this also concludes today's video if you enjoyed it then don't forget to leave a rating on it that would be super appreciated also comment down below what is your favorite weapon upgrade and in the meantime subscribe for more activate the notification bell and i will see you guys in a bit